I occasionally like to review power stations on my channel, mainly because I am completely fascinated with them. Recent changes in power station technology started including a UPS feature. A UPS, of course, is an uninterruptible power source that allows you to basically feed off of the grid, power goes down, the power switches automatically over to the inverter and uses the battery in order to power your devices. Now these power stations in general are built to supply power. The difference between a UPS feature and a non-UPS feature is the electricity pass through from your wall, saving you from having to run the inverter all the time and draining your battery, AKA reducing the battery life of your power station. So in today's video, I am going to take $8,000 worth of miscellaneous batteries, all of which claim to have a UPS feature, put them to the test and see if that is actually a thing. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. That's right, I'm testing the UPS feature. I wanna see if I was right. I made the claims. I said I love that feature. Let's go ahead and jump right into the data. I know, that's a change. I'm gonna tell you what I found and then I will word vomit at the end of the video. So feel free to stop it like when I get there. To collect my data today, I actually tested four main batteries that really claimed to have a UPS feature. One is an Ocatel, that's a 2000 watt worth $1,500. A Vigerpool 1200 watt, that that is $1,100, a Mango Power E, which is a big behemoth of a battery, 3,000 watt output capacity running in at $3,699, and a Van Powers Pro 2,000 watt, $1,779 power station. I actually tested more, but I'm not gonna get into those because they didn't really advertise UPS and there's various reasons why I'm not going to include those. For the testing computer, I used a relatively new power supply with a 13900K processor. And to make sure it was actually pulling some watts, I loaded up Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and ran a benchmark for every single test just to see if there was any kind of glitch, something that would freeze, power down, whatever. So on to the testing results. With my test PC pulling five to 600 watts running the benchmark with Call of Duty, the first up is the Ocatel. Now again, this is a 2000 watt, only pulling five to 600 watts from it. I hook everything up. I got a nice little switch, by the way, with the light that tells me when that light switch goes off. And sure enough, the Ocatel with the UPS backup feature did not skip a beat. I turned it off. There was no glitch. The, the monitor, the PC, everything was connected to this battery and there was not a single hiccup. This is more or less an off-brand battery, so I was kind of surprised, but the UPS feature confirmed. The second power station that I tested was a Vigerpool 1200 watt power station. And just like the Ocatel, I flipped the switch, the light went off, and absolutely no issues. That benchmark kept going, the graphics card didn't flinch, nothing. Overall, I can say the Vigerpool also can be a great UPS. Now, the third one was a little bit of an overkill. Now, this is a Mango Power E. This is a huge battery. I mean, this is like this big 3000 watts, has a huge capacity. It does have power pass through UPS and all of that that you would expect out of something that costs $3,699. And just as expected in the same scenario, flipping off the power, did not skip a beat, nothing turned off, no monitor flashing, no game glitching, nothing. It worked perfectly as a UPS at five to 600 watts. I keep saying that by the way, because I had things to say at the end of this video to kind of sort of explain my results and why you should you know, be careful. And last but not least, this is the Van Powers 2000 Pro. It's a 2000 watt, it cost $1,779. And this actually kind of hurt me just a little bit because I proclaimed this battery to be my favorite battery based off of the features, the performance and everything about it. I actually stood behind it, I was like, man, I love this power station. However, I hooked it up, started my benchmark, flipped that switch, and what do you know? everything turned off. One last shot. It still powers on. But the UPS doesn't work. You were my favorite battery and you don't even have backup. What is wrong with you? You were my favorite. Not anymore. I'm done. I should note that I ran multiple tests and there was one time where it did not turn off, but that doesn't count because 
as a whole, the majority of the time I tried it out, it turned off. Of course, the inverter kicked right back on, so if it was not a computer, then it would instantly have power again, but it was not fast enough to switch over to keep that computer running, especially while running a benchmark. Therefore, the UPS feature, even though it technically exists, is not fast enough to be used as something to protect a computer or a server. Huge letdown, and it is no longer my favorite battery. That, that's where I am. So the ultimate answer to the question, can a portable power station be used as a makeshift UPS to protect your computers, your servers at home, and then just in case you wanna take that battery and go camping with it or something, you could do that. The answer is yes, probably, maybe, kinda, sorta, depends on the brand, but for the most part, yes. Just make sure you do the research, maybe try to find a video that shows the UPS switching to make sure that it will actually work for your needs, if that even exists for every random brand that exists out there. Make sure it actually works and or make sure you have a return policy on that power station you're buying in order to do this. So that's the end of the results. Let's just say that's the end of the video. Feel free to close the like and subscribe, have a fun day and all that other good stuff. However, if you wanna stay for some word vomit and some actual afterthoughts here, I think you should pay attention to this. So let's continue. First and foremost, most computers, power supply, stuff like that, you have about a 17 millisecond, give or take, a 17 millisecond window to work with of power loss and then coming back on before your computer, server, whatever shuts down. A real UPS, something you purchased that you're gonna put, let's say in a rack or behind a computer or whatever, normally has a four to a six millisecond switch time. What that means is when the power goes out, it switches over to the inverter, kicks off, starts using the batteries, and then powers your devices. Four to six milliseconds. These power stations advertise 10, 15, 20 milliseconds. So right on the surface, they have a higher switch time and it makes it sketchy just based off of that information right there. They are not meant to be backing up your server, backing up your computer, stuff like that. At least so far, they just do not have the hardware required to give you the very fast switch time that some sensitive equipment actually might need. Which is why I say yes, kind of, sort of, possibly, but probably yes. Also, when it comes to UPS features for these power stations, most of them are tuned to give you 110 volts. But if you're going from 120, let's say four, 124 from your wall, then you drop that down to 110 on top of having a 15 to 20 millisecond uh, switch time from the grid power to the battery power, that's where I personally start kind of getting worried about the equipment that you're trying to protect with a UPS. So I feel like that is something important that you should consider. Another big thing is going to be what power station you get. If it has a UPS mode, how fast can that power station charge? This is a big deal because I have power stations that can charge, like for example, my Mango E can charge up to 3000 watts. 3000 watts, that is fast as heck. Whereas some other ones that are like 1200 watt power stations can only charge it, let's say 600 to 800 watts. That charging ability directly correlates to its UPS functionality. So if you go out and you buy a 2000 watt portable power station, thinking that you can have, let's say 1800 to 2000 watts worth of backup power supply for your computer or whatever it is you wanna run off of it, that's not true. If you buy 1200 watts, it can only charge at 800 watts, then that means that you're only gonna wanna be able to back up anything UPS wise up to that 800 watt charging capacity. It just cannot do more, at least with every single battery that I tested. Just another thing to keep in mind, how fast can it charge? Primary example, the Manga Power E, the big behemoth, I hooked it up to my main you know, battery backup thing and I unplugged it, everything turned off. I was like, oh crap, everything was a waste. Well, that was because I actually had that thing set to charge at only 15 amps, 1800 watts from the wall. And when I did my test, I was actually over 1800 watts. So it flipped over to the inverter, but not fast enough because I was actually over the pass through charging rate that I had it set to and my server rack was pulling too much. Therefore, it just took longer for that inverter to kick in. I have since changed that to charge at 3000 watts and now everything works great, but that is just the perfect example of do not 
overdo what your power station can charge at if you're relying on it for a UPS. UPSs, like real UPSs are expensive. If you want something that can give you a lot of power and give you a decent capacity, they are expensive. My recommendation, and this is just based off what I'm trying to do with my own system right now, is to get a decent UPS and or a set of UPSs that can handle the wattage draw that you need for everything that you're trying to back up. Yes, I know that's only gonna give you like eight minutes worth of backup power, but that does not matter. If you are trying to use these power stations, maybe with a slower switch time, even with the ones that don't switch over fast enough to keep a computer up and running, if you want to supplement the power, you wanna supplement the runtime for your servers, your racks, your computers, whatever, and you wanna supplement it with a power station, that is probably gonna be one of the best setups you can do. Because let's be real, I mean, those, those UPSs that you buy, even rack mountable, they got like four, two to four batteries in there. They last eight minutes and two minutes, whatever. And if you wanna expand that, it's expensive as heck, and it's just not really feasible. However, if you were to supplement that with a power station that would be able to switch over, let's say it took half a second, to switch over. Your real UPS will keep your stuff up and running. The power station kicks in, gives it the power it needs to carry it for potentially hours while having the added benefit of a power station that I can grab, take with me if I need it for power outside of the home for whatever reason, it's just there. I don't always have to have it hooked up to the server rack. It's a dual purpose. And that's why I think power stations that give you everything the power stations give you, but also have a UPS backup power option is the best deal and probably the only type of power station you should ever consider purchasing. So guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, recommendations, make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. As always, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.